Hello, I am Jeremiah. Although a lot of people better know me as Fishrock123, where I can be found online basically everywhere on Twitter or GitHub with a picture of a fish that so far no one has proven I'm not actually that fish. <laughs> and I volunteer a lot of my time currently to work on Node Core. And what that sort of means is I deal with a lot of issues and pull requests, help manage releases and get everyone to like coordinate together um, on top of occasionally actually writing code for core. Also, I have hedgehogs, which I can assure you are totally relevant to this talk and are super cute and designed to totally grab your attention and distract you. So my talk is titled Contributing to Node Core. And what I mean by Node Core um, is, is this thing, Node.js slash Node, um, the new repo where now everything lives. It used to be at um, the repo called Joint slash Node. Now it's at Node.js slash Node, and that's where all the source for your Node.js executable lives. And that's what we generally refer to as Node Core. Um, but this thing is also technically Node Core now. Uh, that's the Node.js um, GitHub organization. And there's a lot of other repos other than just Node, Node Core, in, in there. Um, including translation repos, repos dealing with build. Um, node gip is in here now because we, that's very close to all of our infrastructure and our websites also there, among other things. So contributing to node core, um, why would you want to do that? Well, we're all here at a node conference, um, one, one of the, probably like the biggest node conference in Europe. So we, we all use this, right? Like, yeah. Um, but we, we, like all software, we, we have, there's going to be like trouble using it ever so often. And we, we would like to, to be nicer to use in whatever crazy case we're using it. Like if we need it to be faster like Trevor wants it or however, however we're using it. Um, or more powerful or... You know, maybe the documentation's not so great. Our documentation's not so great. <laughs> it needs to be better. And you can, you can help make these things better. Um, and Nodecore is, is, at least we'd like it to not be an exclusive club. We'd like to be able to say this. It's still a little bit exclusive. Um, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit difficult to still come on, but it shouldn't be an exclusive club, that's for sure. Um, and it's definitely a lot less than it used to be. Otherwise, I wouldn't really be here either. So you're saying contribute to Node Core. Well, you know, Node Core is a, is a little bit frightening. If you, if you go there, there's like all these crazy files. And if you click on the wrong one, you're, you end up in a mess of like streams or something. Um, it's a little bit spiky on the outside. You know, It's a little bit like the hedgehogs. They're also really spiky on the outside. If you go and touch the top, it's especially with like one finger, you're not gonna have a good time. But like once you kind of get your hands underneath it, you know, it's soft and really cute, and you can kind of once you get your hands around core too, you can kind of get around those spikes. Um, <laughs> so I had to get started on core somehow, just like Trevor did and James did, and everyone else who's currently works on there, Yosuke. Too, um, and truth is, I'm probably a lot like a lot like you. I'm not some super awesome, you know, code ninja, rockstar, 49x developer, hero, or whatever they call them nowadays. Like, I mostly respond to issues and help just coordinate things, and you know, occasionally I type things and computers do things, and even like Fedor's told me once, Fedor and Dutney. Um, when I when I said to him like that's like kind of what I did I know I, I type things in computers do things he's like well you're a lot like me because like I just type things in computers do things too so you know we're all pretty similar even if even if it seems like if it seems like we're not um, so I was always 
kind of interested in core since I was like using it for websites and things beforehand. But then IOJS came around and it was like, okay, so it looks looks like there might be some way I can like get started with this because um, there's like more of a community thing around this and there's not like just these couple people. It seems like there might be something more that I can get involved in. But you know, back December last year, I haven't been actually around no core that long. Back December last year, like I really had no clue how I contribute to this thing. Um, you know, you go into the, the files and there's like all these different libraries and there's a bunch of like dot files and these capital files that you like yell at you and stuff and some other things. And the, if you like click through there, you click through lib or something, or if you click through SRC, you end up in a bunch of like C++ and you're like, what is this? I don't know. So I helped start iojs.org because I made websites before and I could at least do this while, while we were spinning up. Um, that was in December 14, 2014. And then the next month I was like, okay, well, if I can help make the website for this thing, you know, maybe I can become a little bit more involved. So I helped, I started helping out on the, the issue tracker more. Um, and people actually like really found that, that helpful that I was um, helping out on issues and trying, trying to solve things. And so later that month, um, in one of the first like onboardings that was like new to this, to know, to um, IOJS, um, this concept of like, let's actually bring on collaborators, like open, open source or whatever they call it. So I was onboarded as a collaborator, um, and then I could actually like close issues and continued doing that and, you know, started, you know, making a, a docs change or two, because that's like what I could do. I felt comfortable with enough um, that I could do that. Still didn't really, really do much code or anything, and that was fine. Um, and people found that useful enough that like someone else was helping out with, you know, just issues um, or docs, and so um, they added me to the release team, which was um, just Rod Vag and Chris Dickinson at the time. And Chris Dickinson had only done like one release, and then they had me to the release team. And were like, hey, maybe you can do a release. So you know, I did a release, and now I do I do releases. Um, and then later that month, it was like, okay, you know, help me out with all these issues. It's, it's, um, it's good enough. We'll, we'll add you to the technical committee. Um, and that's, that's partially because I have time. I realize not everyone has time, and I'll address that. Um, but like all this, you know, um, onboarding as a collaborator, we adding add to the release team, and the TSC. When I was first onboarded as a collaborator, again, like, I'd just done docs changes. I had done no code until I was actually as a collaborator. My first commit on the Node repo is add Fishrock123 as a collaborator. <laughs> so that's, that's a little bit of history about me and how I got involved. So what's like the state of contributing today? Um, so how did we get here? It was a, there wasn't really any, any clear way to like get collaborating um, back in in some of the older days, you need to sign a CLA, which is this crazy legal agreement that not everyone could sign, or not definitely not everyone wanted to sign. Um, but then this logo came around, which turned into this very quickly, Node Forward. Um, sort of the idea that um, let, let's get more of community involved in this, um, and not just have like a couple single people run this, or a single company run this. Let, let's try and get everyone involved, because we have so much community in NPM and all all these other places, um, we need to get them involved. And then um, I just came out of that, and there was a crazy bike shot about logos or something, yeah. And I just brought in all these new ideas that, um, you know, we can just onboard people, like, just like me, um, probably just like you, that can also help out, and they don't need to know absolutely everything in the world to, to be able to do so. You know? And that we can also have, like, releases from from people and, you know, maybe backed by a foundation eventually, which we now are. So, contributing now, I, I think it's really interesting that um, on this slide that I had, you know, the Node.js um, foundation GitHub now, um, you look at that and it's like, okay, there's a repo and stuff, but if you see there, there's, there's actually now in this, this repo in a fairly short amount of time, since it's existed um, around time of IOGS, there's 365 people in there um, that all help out on various different things. And that's, you know, there's like 
44 people on core. There's a bunch of people on their website and docs. There's tons of people that translate the website so that other people can use it. Like these are all things that um, if you'd like to, you like you can help out and and do, and it's much easier to than before. And a lot of these efforts are in a new concept that we have, which are working groups. Um, and what working groups are is they're autonomous projects um, for specific, really specific, for addressing really specific issues. Um, so, like the website has its own working group, and they, you know, if they really need to, they have a meeting. But there's their their own set of like collaborating people on that that don't need to be have anything to do with core. You don't you don't need to contribute anything to core. You can just like work on work site, the website, or if you care about documentation, you can just work in the documentation working group. Or even if you don't feel that comfortable, if you feel more com comfortable with like your own language group, there's like translation groups for basically every language. If there isn't, like we'll make one for you and you can start and we'll help you with it. Um, and then there's of course, you know, like core core itself, which as I mentioned, now has 44 collaborators, all people that can uh, close issues and PRs and help you out um, and help you become one if, if you'd like to be and if you'd, if you'd like to help out in that way. And we also have 15 TSC members, um, people who kind of guide the project um, when collaborators can't. And the TSC, um, just a note about it, like it's definitely like a little bit more um, it's, it's, it's harder to get into TC partially because like we have a meeting every week that we kind of like have to have. So there's a bit more time commitment. So generally right now, um, we, we have just people for the most part that like can dedicate more time. Usually they work on like no car part or for full time. Um, but we want to get like more people in there to, to get more opinions at that level too and have more diversity and inclusion up there. Also there's, um, really aw awesome concept now of, of onboarding collaborators. Um, so it's not just um, when we want to have someone and give them like commit bit and have them be able to close issues and that sort of thing, we now actually give them a bit of a, um, a mentorship onboarding um, sort, of, sort of thing. Um, and we'll schedule um, if possible. We try to take as little time as possible to do these things because we know people don't have like unlimited time and that sort of thing. But we try to get like a 30, 45 minute call where they can ask us questions and we can kind of instill as much knowledge as we can in them during that time. And hopefully um, we can even follow up and make sure they, they understand that. And that's just sort of to get them um, associated with some of the process around core if they don't already understand it. So we might want to make that more accessible um, so there's still more work to be done there, but it's definitely a better state than it was previously. Um, so what, what do like contributions look like? Like what, what can you tangibly sort of do? Um, again, there's the, the working groups. We have a lot of them. We have some people who stick specifically to build. They're like, okay, I want um, Node to be able to build on this platform better because we use it at work. Um, so there's people who work on like in different distros of Linux. Um, and also different ARM platforms, we've really integrated with that. Again, there's a couple of people that just work on the website. Um, if you're really interested in streams, there's a bunch of people that just work on streams and you can help out with that. It's definitely a place. Um, again, the translation groups, or even if you like, just like promoting things like evangelism is, is great. Um, so we have all these different things and there's even more too, I think now. Also the docs, docs is a great place. Um, very rare that we would ever, actually like never, that we would actually say, you know, we can't take commit because it's just like this tiny little doc change. No, no, we'll take it, um, if it if it improves the documentation. So if you care more about the documentation and want to improve it, um, we'll, we'll take that stuff. We'll try to, you know, get it up, like improved as best as we can and get it through. Um, another place to help out, like even if you aren't a collaborator, there's much more people you can call on to to like close stuff if it needs to be closed or any of that stuff. So um, even if you just feel like occasionally doing like a bit of issue in PR review, um, that's a great way to help out too. Um, that's how I got started out. I know that's how Trevor got started out. I think that's how James got started out too. Um, another cool thing, we have a good first contribution label on the GitHub now. It's not as accessible as it should be, but it's in the labels and there's a bunch of stuff that's under there that you can look at and we've we've specifically gone and be like, okay, this we might not have time for this, but this should be good for someone to like get started on. 
Um, and that's not guaranteed to be easy through to like actually you know, making it in, but it's something we think that like people should be able to you know, hopefully look into. Um, I know Rust, Rust has one of these tags too. It's called E-Easy on their thing. And so hopefully that helps um, if you're looking for good places to, to like start contributing code or anything else. We have that on the core repo. Um, but we also, we also know that uh, not everyone has time. Like lots of these things are very time-based and you need to dedicate a lot of time to actually be able to, to do anything with them. So there's, there's actually a couple things that you can um, still help out with. So if, if you have modules at all, or if you like use modules and really want them to be um, more robust into the future, if you can help, well, we're going to be pu putting more stuff about this new thing that we're doing, which is called smoke testing. We're going to take NPM modules that um, A, we can, and B, like a lot of the community cares about, if possible. Um, we're going to take them, and we're going to actually run the tests for all those modules against new releases to like guarantee more stability and whatnot. So if you have like modules and you can help us make them more easy, easily testable, that, that's a great way to help out. Even if you have like no time on your own modules and stuff. Um, our, lot, basically all of the hardware that we have in our um, continuous integration testing suite is donated by people. Most of it um, is donated by large corporations, but actually like I think just over 50% of our ARM cl cluster, which lives down in Australia in Rod's house right now, um, about 50% of that is actually donated by individuals um, just like you. So if you want to make a contribution, even if you don't have time, like if you, if you want to donate like a uh, Raspberry Pi or a Gill Bone or you know, whichever small platform you use, that's, a, that's also a great way to, to help out. Um, so I'm here to sp speak about like contributing to Node Core. So let's let's dig a little bit deeper and try to like make a simple code PR. So let's make a PR. So there's like some core structure to kind of you know know about. So there's all these like sort of files and um, what's in the lib and src and gets all mangled together and who knows what those capital files actually mean like something. So the things we'll probably actually care about are doc, lib, src, test, and those, some of those capitals, md files, like there's the readme in there. It probably needs fixing up by now. Um, so if you see like errors in it, we'll, we'd be uh, glad to take some of those um, as PRs. Again, docs, I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, so in the lib, in src is like kind of where code lives, but also code lives in test. Actually, tests is like tests are a great place to, to get started. I know a lot of people um, who are collaborators now who kind of got started more um, by by making and improving tests, but that's that's not really where I started, so I, I don't really have uh, best knowledge about that. But so there's these lib and src files. So if you go in src, there's like tons of C++ and stuff. But if you go in the lib and you're like, oh, there's some JavaScript in here, I and mean, it actually turns out that um, Core is more made up of JavaScript than C++ or anything else. There's actually PHP in there for some reason. I don't know where that is. Um, <laughs> and some D for analyzing things. But yeah, I find that most people don't actually know that most of it's actually JavaScript. So it just, just needs to be where you look. So uh, let's go back to docs for a minute. So the docs that live at node.js.org slash API are the ones that are found in slash doc slash API. The rest of um, the stuff in doc is like just stuff that build it and it's like some there's like a picture or two for our logo or something. And if you go in there, there's just markdown files for each subsystem and you can go in there and like edit as much as you want and when you make a PR if like anything is wrong with formatting or any sort of thing like that, we'll try to help you as best as we can to, to fix that up. So that's a Definitely a place. Um, so there's this good con first contribution label, and we want to make a uh, code contribution if we can while we're here. So I look through that, and there's one that's tagged something about console.group. But if you actually look down into those, um, there's people who are like, well, the console global doesn't really quite represent what's in the browser, so maybe we could make it more like what's in the browser. So if we go back to these files that we actually care about, um, 
You know, the Azure C is mostly that C++, and we don't really want that, and we don't need tests for this yet. So let's look in, in lib, and if, if you go into lib, you can find lib slash console. Most of the stuff in lib is, this, is the um, things from core that you'll actually like require, and you'll get that. Um, and basically what, what, um, what lib slash console is, is this thing that takes an SD out and SD error, and it just has like, you know, regular JavaScript functions attached to it. And so if we want to make console.count, which we don't have yet, like all we need to do is put like a, the JavaScript function in there, and it can maybe look like this. It's probably not the best, but um, yeah. And that, lots of that stuff is just, just JavaScript, so no need to worry about the scary C++ yet. Um, I'm almost out of time, but I should really mention we still have to do better. It's in a lot better state than it was. It's easier to contribute than ever before, but it can still be easier to contribute. The docs, really not the best. Um, they need to get better all the time. And if you see somewhere where you don't understand the docs, you know, maybe it'd be helpful if you could uh, point it out. I think that'd be great for us. There's also a documentation working group that's just trying to, to get um, spun up with like guides on specific topics and all kinds of cool stuff. So if you're interested in that, that'd be great. It's also, also along with that, we're trying to get less internal knowledge between just the core people. So um, that's really on us to get out into those docs, but hopefully um, that can happen more soon. And also, we, we re really do need to work on uh, getting more diversity and inclusiveness into here. Um, it's not really there yet, but, but we're working on it. Um, and if you don't think uh, we're working on it enough, please like complain to me or one of the other TSE members. Also, there's a Node Foundation workshop um, coming up soon-ish, sometime later today. And what that actually means is it'll be like some sort of workshop. Um, I'm told that's probably going to be like our, our new thing. So we're going to have a new thing um, that's sp sponsored like by the foundation that's going to try and get people more involved in core, sort of like a node school. And this will probably be like a trial run for that or something, I'm told. So hopefully it is, wherever Michael is. She's here. No? Anyways, um, thanks. <laughs>